Now, my colleague Kenneth Aotudako joins me via Zoom for more on this. Uh, Ken, so this is a story of Kambuli, but you visited other places in the Alambele district. Uh, would you say this is widespread and that the patronage uh, is reaching, uh, in, is quite high with a lot of children having access to this, this platform? Indeed, the patronage is, is very, very high because if you go to some of the communities uh, and some spots in the area, you'd realize that uh, children are gathered in their tens and fifteens uh, and fives around the nearest uh, uh, battery powered radio set that they'll find, and they try as much as possible to uh, get in onto the uh, the learning that's going on. And so you will find that every family that has a radio set ensures that all the children in the community come around anytime there there is a, an educational session ongoing and they all participate. And the thing is, uh, they have very um, different times that they, they hold these uh, educational sessions. One of them is at 10 a.m. in the morning. And so the children, all of them know, no matter the child you are doing, when it's time for that particular activity, all of them move into the place and then they, they have that session. And one interesting thing was that uh, one of the, the kids uh, whose interview was played uh, some uh, moments ago had his grandmother introduce him to this particular project. And so he was there and the grandmother called him uh, that there was this thing that she heard on the radio and she told the, the child's father about it and then that was when uh, it, all, it, all, it all began. And so he has also introduced most of his friends to this initiative and it's, it's going great for them so far. And so from that grandmother note, how are other parents in the, and guardians in the district also responding to this uh, you know, platform, this opportunity to have their children study? As, as we speak, it has become like a communal initiative. Everybody has bought into the project. And then uh, no matter where the, the, any of the kids find themselves, it, it, there's always somebody to suggest that they have a radio set or this particular device through which they can uh, access this facility. And so uh, their colleagues ensure that they are there at, at the time that uh, the, 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 the session is about to be rolled out. And so it's something that they have all bought in. And uh, the parents are very much involved in this. They ensure that their kids have the appropriate resources because if you look at the uh, the, the district itself is called Kanguli and it's a predominantly Muslim community and all of them uh, have a, a very uh, it's a very reserved uh, people if, if, if you'd like and so if we get to that particular time they all converge together and their parents call each other and wherever their kids are they call them as well to partake in this particular exercise and so it's it's something that is very communal and everybody has bought into it and they ensure that everybody's present to have it because they believe that in with the inadequacies that they are encountering right now uh, uh, one of them which is the in, uh, inaccessibility to uh, smartphones and the internet that's going to ensure that uh, they partake in the e-learning activities that the government has rolled out because of those uh, inadequacies they ensure that uh, because they know that is the only way that they can partake in the national cake in terms of education and the development of the education uh, the educational space in their community and so they are very much interested in this project and uh, are very glad and they also hope that it continues uh, to the latter until at least when COVID-19 is over. Could you? And the kids are obviously excited about this and I mean obviously once they have the opportunity to gather some way somehow and meet their friends you expect that uh, they should be excited about this but uh, observing them do you think that they are actually uh, paying close attention to the lessons and they are following keenly? So one of the issues that the district uh, director of education raised was uh, had to do with the uh, ability to assess whether or not the children were actually following the uh, uh, the lessons through examinations amongst others. These, these are issues that, you know, the government is also grappling with. And so it's understandable that he has issues when it comes to uh, the assessments as to how uh, well the kids have assimilated whatever they have been they have been taught. But aside that, I think they, they are all very interested. And one interesting thing, Kujia, I must add that, uh, the social distancing protocols are something that they are very, very much adhering to. You would think that as a rural community as that, uh, it would be very difficult and you would think that uh, the message hasn't really gone down well with them. But uh, while I was there for the, the two days that I was there, you'd see that every uh, family or every group that had uh, this particular interaction had a, a bucket, a Veronica bucket, I should say, with uh, the, 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 the uh, WHO advised the protocols. They have their hand sanitizers, they have their... Uh, uh, napkins amongst other tissues and all of that ensuring that uh, no matter what happens they are still ensuring that the social distancing protocols are adhered to while they try to uh, access and also bridge this particular inequality gap in terms of education in their community and i saw a little girl there also with a, a face mask and that is very yeah. encouraging uh, but tell yes. me about the facilitators um, uh, you know how are they looking to 
take this forward and what are the impressions of the program so far? So could you add, I, I, okay. So far, uh, the feedback uh, according to, uh, for example, Talo Ghana is saying that the feedback has been very, very impressive because uh, for the, you know, it was something that they were already doing, but it wasn't to this extent. They were having their own social, uh, corporate social responsibility in that in that district because it's one of the catchment areas where they, they do their business. And so they were already doing something over there. But they chose to extend it because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And that is what has also has given the, the, the initiative a lot of traction among the people in the community. And so uh, the feedback, he says, uh, that, 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 that the social intervention manager told me uh, from Talogana is that it has it has been something that has gained a lot of traction, especially within the past few weeks where the, the pandemic has hit the country very hard. And so one of the recommendations that you have had over the period is to try and uh, broaden the, the number of uh, studies, the number of courses actually that they enroll in, in, in this particular initiative. For instance, they are having uh, three uh, subjects being taught around this period. And so uh, some of the parents and the chiefs and opinion leaders in the area uh, are of the view that if it's extended to cover some of the other uh, core subjects and also some of the elective subjects, it will, it will, be, very, it will, be, it will be very great for the community. And now also, it's, it's also being run currently at the JHS level and so they also are asking that if it was going to be extended, uh, the, the, uh, some of the, other, the primary schools, the primary level should be considered and also uh, help them also bridge that particular gap in terms of inequality in the area. And so basically the reaction, the feedback, I, I should say, has, has been great and people want it extended to, 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 to widen the scope of education in the area. Ken, thank you very much for bringing us this story. And of course, we'll be looking at the other areas who are also deprived and how they are catching up uh, with their uh, education as well. Now This year's Ido Fetal celebration has not been the same. No congregational prayers in open parks or places. No chance of meeting to celebrate the most important festival for Muslims. But Deputy National Chief Imam of the Al Sana Wal Jama, that Sheikh Mohammed Kamil Mohammed, has organized his family to observe the prayer in their home. Sheikh Mohammed advises Muslims to remain steadfast and co conduct themselves well during this pandemic. Mohammed. Nuruddin was there and filed this report. Their ambitious Eid plans could not be carried out as they break a month long Ramadan fast for Eid al Fitr. The extended family gathered to observe the Eid prayer in this unique celebration. Well, we are happy because uh, all is the same. It's uh, for, you, for you to pray. Not, I mean, uh, for you to pray and never pray. So, and Allah, Allah is with us everywhere, not only where I mean, we, when, on the parks. So, we pray everywhere. Even um, I, I myself, I appreciate that this year this nonsense will stop. Those who gangara gangara, those who are my, motorbikes and the rest, this, it will stop. We are very happy that Allah, I mean, uh, but if we, we, are, we are praying. We don't want the, 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 the pandemic, but it has stopped so many things. Actually, we have missed a lot of things. If it were in the normal times, we will have met a lot of friends, friends that you have, that you have missed for so many years, we will have met, make merry, celebrate, share memories, but we are not seeing it now. Even among the families, we are not seeing everybody because of the pandemic. One of his sons, Professor Nail Mohammed Kamil, shared his initial Eid expectations with us. The expectation was that it's going to be quite boring because uh, we didn't know what was going on. We didn't know even by this time, perhaps there, is, there will be another lockdown announcement from the government. Sheikh Dawood knew Saleh's family had just finished observing the Eid prayer in their family house too. They slaughter a sheep to consolidate the family's prayers. <laughs> We should not go and gather somewhere to celebrate. It is against the protocols. Anyone who goes against the protocols must be dealt with. So don't gather anywhere to celebrate. 
this is not the time for such things. Been easy since the beginning of Ramadan up to the celebration of Eid. We all wish we go out to meet our family, our friends, and enjoy and celebrate the Eid together. But unfortunately, we have to celebrate it at home. So it's not something that we wish or something that we like, but we just have to say Alhamdulillah. And after that, as you can see, the women are cooking something, and then as you can see, the, man, the men also are trying to kill, uh, slaughter a sheep for us to just enjoy. So far, the hugs from friends and then the greetings, the prayers from friends, that's something I miss so much, very, very much, because when we go together in our numbers, you get someone to pray for you, you get to hug someone you've seen in a very long time, and I think I miss that very much. I wish all Muslims happy Eid Mubarak to my friends and family and to my colleagues at SIC Insurance Campaign and to my sweetheart Alaji Shamsuddin. Eid celebration is considered. Now, following the preventive restrictions on social and religious gatherings as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, Muslims across the country have, for the very first time, held the Eid of Fitr celebration at home. The situation, according to some Muslim families in Tichiman, is worrying, and they are praying for an end to the pandemic. And as a bit reports from Tichiman in the Bono East region. Eid of Fitr is the first day of the Islamic month of Shawwal. It marks the end of Ramadan, which is the month of fasting and prayer for Muslims around the globe. Many Muslims attend communal prayers, listen to a khutbah sermon, and give zakat al-fitr, a charity in the form of food, during this festive season. However, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, this Eid prayer, which is usually held in a congregational manner, had to be observed by individuals at home. Municipal Chief Imam of Alu Sunnah Wal Jamaa, Imam Idrisu Suleiman, tells Joy News how he observed this Eid. I observed it in my house where I did it with my, my wife and children. And it wasn't nice all do, but uh, because of uh, the problem of COVID-19, we have no any alternative than to do it like that. Imam Idrisu is however happy that the Muslim Ummah has been law abiding with regards to the restrictions placed on religious gatherings. Muslims are now practicing something that we can say they are law, law abiding. We even didn't hear of anybody trying to do it uh, otherwise. We've been speaking with some Muslim families and their sole prayer is to see the end to the COVID-19 pandemic. Abdulaziz Suleiman is one of them. Today is our first time for us to verify such thing. So we plead to the Almighty Allah that He should wash away all our sin. If we did wrong or whatever we've done to Him and we had this kind of virus, we pray, we plead to Almighty Allah that He should wash this thing from the world. Reporting for Joy News, Anas Sabit, Techiman. Now, some personnel of the Ghana Navy in the Western region have tested positive for coronavirus. My colleague Maxwell Abubai is there uh, as the Zoom Lion undertakes some disinfection exercise of their vessels, offices, and roads there. Maxwell, if you can hear me, do we know how many have tested positive? Well, um, Anna, we've been speaking to the um, flag, com uh, flag commanded officer here at the Western Naval um, Command but he wouldn't give us details of the number of men who have been infected. Initially, when we started the conversation, he talked about, he mentioned stigma as the reason he would not want to put out um, a number. But we pushed him further, but he said, no, he cannot put out, you know, um, the number of men who have been infected um, out there. But speculations are right here in the Western region, and uh, I'm once again stating, he uh, that these are 
speculation and um, rumors that we are hearing from the people here um, that the number of men infected by the coronavirus um, is 21. But that has not been confirmed by the commander. We thought this figure to him. He said he's not in a position to confirm that figure, but he can only tell us that yes, some men of the um, some personnel of the Western Naval Command have tested positive um, for the uh, coronavirus. We understand they have been isolated and are currently, you know, um, being um, treated. But if you come here to the Western Naval uh, Command, the strict protocol are being adhered. Um, you can, if you come in inside without a nose mask, just like you know, um, for all you know, uh, public buildings and offices, you know, be allowed anything if you're not in a nose mask. If you're not in a nose mask. And that is being enforced strictly uh, here. But um, the disinfection, um, this cases that have been recorded here have actually necessitated um, the disinfection of the vessels, the roads, and the various offices um, here at the Western Naval Command. So just um, some minutes ago, we have personnel from Zoom Lions disinfecting um, some of the vessels. You know, you can see behind me, and then the road here, the street here, and then the various um, offices. Almost 200 players um, were able to do um, that disinfection uh, within um, two hours. So as a stands now, they've all assembled, the team of uh, players have all assembled on the main field here, waiting um, to, to, to live on it. How long will this exercise take? Is it just a day's event, or the, they're going to do this for a number of days? Well, this is just a day's event, and like um, I mentioned earlier, uh, it has been necessitated um, by the cases that have been you know, recorded here at the Western uh, Naval uh, Command. That is the reason the Zoom line was caught in coming to contest um, the place. Uh, I spoke to someone from the top first social responsibility unit of the Zoom line, and he told me that this exercise comes part of their PSR. So when they were caught, the city has to respond and come in to uh, disinfect the place on it. Maxwell, thank you for this update. We'll return to the Western region once there's a development on this exercise, which is underway. Now. Back here to a crowd, we asked what's in the name. Honorable Ponchi, and I'm sure you remember him, has reacted to AY Puyoyo's real good slogan in his music. Now, Honorable Ponchi says that's his name, in fact, his birthright, and that Puyoyo can only become a second goat after he's consented to him using that name. He expresses that displeasure in this interview with my colleague Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin. There is somebody who called Poyo or Koro or Polo, I don't know. I don't know him. And he mentioned my name to make trending. He said he call real goods. Hey! You call real goods? Do you know how much I will spend? How can I uh, register my name that honorable Afonso or goods? I want you to hear that that name I have registered before. If you want trending, you can choose Koro. Meanwhile, they call you Poyo. You can choose Koro. Yeah, and trend. But you mention goats. Hey, do you know the kind of goats? When I say mention uh, the skills of goats or mention how they uh, describe goats, you can mention it. You know how to mention how they describe goats. Goat is my real name. It's my... Uh, property since long back on the days not today how many years now have you been calling yourself good? since 2004 since 2004 it's my old man which uh, is my old man and he may uh, i don't know his name it's it's my grandma it's my grandfather grandmother your grandfather you don't know his name it's my grandfather uh, he come from our country, uh, our village, and come by. We we call him uh, Grandpa, Grandpa. Uh -huh. He mentioned the name for me. Yeah. How? Since, how, how? I don't get uh, you. I don't understand you. He said the way I will go and come, the way I pass and enter the place. If I do compare, I can hear. I can I can go here and appear another place. And then if they say I should have sit here, oh, they, are, they have come. If he come, he didn't see me there. I'll go to compete. 
He said, no, you, 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 you pray like a ponche. You pray like goats. Since 2004, uh, at that time there is campaign, national campaign or a uh, general election where they uh, uh, mentioned that name for me. That ponche I've registered in Mizika, in Quatra Santa, not now. Yeah, so I want to know that if he not uh, make mistake, I will arrest him and take him to court. But, but, but you can you can still have two apontees in Ghana. What is wrong with that? No, 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 no. If you want apontee again in Ghana, they should have come and consult me. And he turned second apontee, not first apontee. I'm very, 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 very double, triple sad. I'm telling you, I'm very, very double, triple sad on you. And I would love to meet Aponche's lawyer. I would like to see the writs. And I'll give everything to be in court to see how this is litigated. This news text with me and Esmini. We're taking a break. We'll bring you business. We'll hear from rice farmers who are struggling as prices continue to decline. And we'll take you to the Bontanga irrigation site in the northern region. Hi, good morning. Welcome to business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Rice farmers at Bontanga irrigation site in the northern region are struggling as price for the major crop continues to decline. The farmers may have to brace for even lower prices as many harvest the crop. Now currently, a bag of rice filled to the brim and extended with a cup is sold for 250 Ghana cities. The farmers are therefore appealing for standardized measurement. There's more in this report by Martina Bugri. The Botanga irrigation site established in 1992 is the biggest irrigation dump in the northern region. Over 900 farmers currently cultivate crops with rice being the most cultivated. With new farming methods, it is estimated that about 22,500 bags of rice is harvested during the dry season and same in the rainy season. But because of low prices, farmers are unable to make profit to keep them in business. Yakub Al Hassan Daniel is a farmer. What we don't enjoy subsidy. We have extensive uh, I mean expenses that we always one. So when you do that and then the price is determined by somebody. It means he is looking at his profit. He's not looking at the farmer suffering. So because of that, at the end of at the end of the season, you go home without anything. The Bontanga Irrigation Project has several farmers and women who work here. It employs over 4,000 people here. We have about 900 farmers. 900 scarers and over 1,000 women who make a daily living from here. But this could be coming to an end. The poor market for the major crop they grow, which is rice. Idrisu Abdul Rashid has been farming for a long time, but he says he has not seen any progress in life. Uh, as a farmer here, we feel very discouraged to be in the business of rice production. Because uh, comparing our rice production to other projects like Tono and other Asituara and Co, uh, having, we have been seeing it on the media how much they sell and how their life is improving. And then we have realized that we are not making any progress. Upon uh, the case of years that we have been in the business of rice production, we have realized that we are not making any progress. Isahaku Al Hassan is definitely not happy about the pricing system. Our main concern is marketing. Yeah, we produce a lot of rice on the project here, but uh, up to now we have not had a satisfactory marketing strategies on the project here. Yeah, the prices we have we receive for our rice. We are not uh, satisfied with that one. When you say you are not satisfied, what exactly do you mean? Yeah, you realize that uh, in determining the price of uh, our rice, the farmer is not uh, solely responsible for that. It's the aggregators who dictate the price for us. And for that one, it is the disadvantage of the farmer. For this bag of rice, it is sold at 250 at the Bontanga irrigation site. 
but elsewhere other farmers are selling it between 300 and 350. Joseph Tonkuru speaks more on this. Challenges have been numerous. Let me just go ahead to the market. The marketing aspect of it is very bad to this. We don't have official markets, agitators who can provide on the, I mean, on the, on the scientific way that is scale. The market women who come here, they come from the south to buy the produce here. And when they come, they buy the produce at their own price. You, the uh, farmer, you will bring your rice to the drying floor as you are selling. You will stand aloof, looking at the aggregator, bagging it the way he wants. He wants. But you have no option. And as we are here, there is no aggregator who has given money to any farmer. No aggregator sponsors farmers here. But yet, he come and take over the farm, the produce, as if they are farming. And the Montanga irrigation project are hoping that somebody somewhere who is interested in rice or even government will come to their aid buy at a more reasonable price so that they are able to make profit and have a better life for joy news martina bugri reporting from the botanga irrigation site all right apparently so there is a rice glut as well that's it for business the news continues after this break Now, the whole Prisons Officers Association, the Wives Association, have donated uh, its dining set, ceiling funds to the whole female prison to improve eating accommodation and uh, other conditions there. Now, this is to uh, help as the coronavirus pandemic continues and to make life better for the inmates. The donation comes as a great relief to inmates who dine on the floor, a situation which exposes their meals to germs and bacteria hereby affecting their well-being. The whole female prison houses about 10 convicts who are serving terms for various crimes committed. The facility, among other things, lacks furniture for dining. This compelled inmates to serve and eat their meals on the floor. The in charge of the whole female prison, Superintendent Mandy Mensa, laments the situation. Um, it has not been the best. They will normally share their food on improvised surfaces, which saddens uh, my heart most of the time when I'm going around the meals are being served to them. This development prompted the Hope Prison Officers' Wives Association to come to the aid of the facility by providing a dining set and two ceiling fans. Our main slogan is, we are the source of comfort. So we decided to donate these table, dining tables, chairs and the fans to the inmates of the whole female phases, to enhance their ventilation one, to make, give them comfort and to improve their condition of eating at the prison. Forta Regional Prisons Commander DDP Andrew Squacy appreciated the gesture and urged other entities to follow suit, especially at a time when the world is fighting the coronavirus pandemic. You know that every condition where ventilation is not good, Diseases thrive, but when ventilation is good, diseases are driven away. So the fund is going to perform multiple purpose in the lives of the prisoners and in the lives of the officers. And then the dining tables. In fact, from my infancy up to now, we only see prisoners eat over dining table before. So this thing. It's a big history we are setting, if not even for the country, at least for whole female prison and for PROA, whole prison of set wives association. It's a big relief to the officer in charge and the, the prisoners and also the officers. In a related development, the Volta Regional Women's Wing of the New Patriotic Party had donated two 25 kg bags of local rice, 50 kg bag of sugar, 70 bottles of hand sanitizer and liquid soap to the whole female prison. Uh, you know, when this pandemic came, it's not everybody who will get uh, uh, these uh, items you have come to donate, especially the uh, sanitizer and the nose marks. It's not everybody who will get 
So I decided to visit all the prisons in Volta region, especially the female prison, to donate to them and give them and give them our support. Fred Kwame Asai, Joy News, who. And here in the studio, my name is Enes Mino. That's it for News Decks today. Many thanks for your company. Please log on to myjohnline.com. You have more stories there. Up next is John News Interactive. Stay tuned in.